everyone. Welcome to Remote STEM Class with Mr. Dowd. Uh, we're going to be continuing on with the Create Your Own Avatar project. Remember, this is going to be an ongoing project. It's going to be going until a little bit before Thanksgiving, I believe. But uh, yeah. So today, uh, sorry, yesterday you should have finished the physical traits inventory. All right, make sure you do that. That's very similar to what Mr. LeMay had done with the um, creating the Starry Night character. But just filling out this one page. It's not too much. It's posted on Google Classroom. Today we're going to do the Learn to Draw 2D. All right. So um, this is why I wanted you to get used to using Google Drawings. Because what you're going to be doing is drawing a 2D, uh, sorry, a 3D object in 2D. Um, we're going to be doing this for the next three days. So I'm hoping to, that will all add up. Um, yeah, so on Google Drawings, you can also do this on graph paper. I don't have any graph paper, so I did it on Google Drawings, which is the exact reason why I had you do it. So say I want to draw this 3D cube in 2D. So I drew a net for it. All right. Um, going forward, I'm going to go through and draw a more orthopedic look. So instead of doing cube, it'll have a cube with a little indent in here, and um, I'll draw that out from each side so it'll be the side looking front on to the side and top view that's what orthopedic means um, i'm going to be posting this link in here this is a link that is posted from um, tinkercad on how to draw in 2d all right so this will be posted in the next couple days also so i'm hoping we can all get through this in the next three days total um, but yeah this will kind of show you how to do it if not, I'm going to do it with you guys. Um, there's also a sh short video. It's only three minutes long on how to draw an orthopedic look. Okay, guys, that's all for today. We're going to go through and kind of use this website to really learn how to do drawing in 2D. All right, guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. See you later. Gators. As you can see, I have a pan of boiling water. Hmm, I wonder what we could be cooking today. So, I'm going to show you how to boil macaroni or spaghetti or macaroni for macaroni and cheese, whatever it is you make it for. If you hear my dog barking, it's because, I don't know, some, something's walking by my window. <laughs> anyway, so it's you don't want to put any of the pasta in until it's boiling like this. All right, and you don't want to just stick it in straight like this. You want to break it. So notice how I broke it in half. All right. Depends how much you want to cook. I don't have a huge, huge pan here because I don't want to cook a lot of it. But if you're cooking a whole box, you're going to need a bigger pan. Okay. This is maybe... Oh, it's a little bit of a box. This is enough for probably one person. So the thing about pasta is everyone's like, oh, how do you know when it's done? You know, mine, I cooked mine too long. It's mushy or it's not, it's not done. That's what I'm going to show you right now. So right now I have some pieces sticking out. You just want to push them down with a fork. Let me get a fork. You don't want to burn yourself. Okay, I'm going to push it down with the fork. And you want to make sure that you're stirring it every so often. If you just leave it, it's going to be one big clump and stick together. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, just stirring it. If you need to turn the water down, turn the water down. Okay. So it's gonna take a few minutes, about five to seven minutes. Okay. Just keep it going, checking on it. You do not wanna put a cover on, all right? You just wanna make sure that you are stirring it and checking on it, okay? Some people put like a pinch of salt in or a little oil to keep it from sticking together. 
But basically, if you are stirring it, you are keeping it from sticking together. You just have to check on it. You can't leave it. Sometimes the flame or the boiling gets too much. You can turn it down. That way it's still boiling, but you can see the pasta. You see how I can still see it? Right? So that'll take, this is gonna take about a few minutes to cook. Like I said, five minutes or so. So I will be back to check on it. Okay, so the spaghetti is ready. If you notice, it's been about seven minutes. Okay. So now you need to remove it to rinse it out. So you're gonna shut the oven off. Okay. And then you're gonna bring it over to the sink and pour it in a strainer. Now I have a little strainer here. You know what? I'm gonna get my big strainer. Actually, I'm gonna use my little strainer. And you're gonna pour it in the strainer so the water comes through the strainer and you just have the spaghetti. Hopefully I can do this without dropping my phone in it. Now I have a bigger strainer, but I also have a little one for like, you know, a little one person meal. So then you're gonna rinse it off with cold water. And you're trying to get all the starch off of it. Okay. So it's still gonna be warm. That's not hot and it's, it's good. There's a little piece in here that's brown because it's burnt. There, so that's good. So now, I don't know how you like to eat it. Some people like to put it in a bowl with butter. Some people like to put it in a bowl with butter and Parmesan cheese. All right. Some people put it on a plate doing meatballs or sauce, big sauce today. We're just doing a little thing of spaghetti. So if you wanted to add some sauce, you could add a little jar sauce that you buy in a jar. Usually I make my sauce, but that's a video for another time. So I'm gonna grab the pan and I'm just gonna put some sauce into the pan, enough for one person pretty much. So with sauce, you don't have to, um, it's really already cooked if it's in the jar. You just have to heat it up. But if you want, you could add like Parmesan cheese, or you could add a little bit of grated cheese, just to fancy it up a little bit. And then you're gonna add it to your spaghetti. So it doesn't take long to heat up. Okay, usually when it starts to bubble. Okay. So on the weekend, sometimes on Sundays, I'll make a big batch of my own sauce and with meatballs. I'll have to show you that sometime. But that takes like a long time to do. That's why I do it on the weekend. During the week, there's always a jar of sauce in the cabinet if anybody feels like spaghetti, but they there's no sauce. So they use that sauce. So jar sauce is good in a pinch. And they have some good jar sauce out there. Okay. All right, so now it's starting to bubble a little bit. Okay. See how it's starting to bubble in the corner? So you turn it off and then you can put it on your spaghetti. Everybody's different. Some people like a ton of sauce so they can dip their bread into it. Other people like a little sauce. So I guess it depends on what you like. This is kind of a lot of sauce. I probably made a little too much, but I'm not eating it. So. And really, you can't really have too much sauce because you can just soak your bread in it and eat it that way. All right, this is a big 
This is a lot of spaghetti for one person. Okay, so let me get some cheese. I don't know where the cheese is, so I guess we're not gonna have it. I was gonna put Parmesan cheese on it, but I don't see it in the fridge. So, that's pretty much it. Put the rest of it on. Sometimes too, when you heat it up, it gets dried out a little bit, so having extra sauce is good. There you go, I got a nice pasta meal. You can do this with macaroni or any type of noodle. And if you were making mac and cheese, it'd be the same idea if you're making it from a box which i could show you another time but you just add what it tells you to on the box and there you go you have some spaghetti it looks like you have enough for two meals all right until next time welcome back to language and play everybody today we are going to play a virtual game of tug of war. Now, you might be sitting there saying, Mister, that doesn't sound right. How are we supposed to play tug of war against a computer? Well, it's the concept that we used yesterday. The suspension of disbelief. Okay? It's getting it into your minds that there is no obstacle in front of you. Okay? We know that there's no rope. However, we're going to make it seem like there is today. All right? And we know that there's no other person on the end of the rope. But we're going to make it seem like there is today. Now, we're going to start by getting down and picking up our rope. This is our rope. Okay? You can see by the way my hands are, it's fairly thick. Okay? You guys have played tug of war in gym. We're going to use that size rope. Now, I'm going to switch. I'm going to hold it with my right hand. I'm going to switch positions with my left because I want one hand up and one hand down. Now, I'm going to get into my tug of war, tug of war pose. And first, I'm going to start pulling back. And I pull backwards on the rope. Oh, and the other team starts pulling forward. Uh, and then I uh, get a good grip there and I pull back a little bit. But now they're pulling me forward, pulling me closer. And now I'm pulling back, pulling back. And, ah, I win. I just dropped my rope. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a little give and take. I want you to play along with the video. All right? So first, everybody right now, bend down, pick up your rope. Good job. All right, now get a grip. Okay. Get in your tug of war stance. All right. And when I say go, I am going to start pulling backwards, which means you are going to have to come forwards. Ready? Go. You should be getting closer to your screen right now. Oh, oh no, you're starting to win. Now you're pulling me forward, so you should be getting further away from your screen right now. Oh, now, uh-oh, you're in big trouble now. I'm starting to pull a little bit further back. Oh, no, you got me a little bit. And then I pull further back, and then look at my face, you can see I'm struggling. I'm really trying to sell the fact that I'm playing this game of tug of war. I win. Maybe next time you can win. But this is the type of suspension of disbelief that we're working on this week. You have to sell it with your face. Sell it with your body. Feel that rope. Feel the strength in your legs. Feel how heavy the rope is with your arms. Feel all of those muscles. You should actually be even a little bit tired from doing this after. If you are suspending your disbelief and making the audience believe you're doing that. All right? I can't wait to see your Starry Night scenes tomorrow, and then we're going to be acting those out next week. Great job, everybody. Hi, guys. This is the second part of our 
drawing a horse. So last time we looked at our image. We had a nice reference of a baby horse to look at, and that does help to have a picture. And I just looked at the shape of his body and I broke it down into smaller shapes. So I used ovals, I used some triangles to help me, some rectangles. So that's just a good way to start. Now we're gonna go in and erase some of those shapes and change them so that they look even more like this little baby horse, okay? I'm gonna start up here with the head. So the first thing I'm gonna do is erase this line here. And then I'm gonna erase a little bit of this. And I really wanna focus on his head and add an eye there and a nose. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put an eye right here. You can see that if you look really close. You can see all the details of his face, his eye and the nose and the mouth. I'm gonna focus on that right now. So I drew his eye. I kind of darken it in a little bit like that. And when I look at his head now, I see a little bit of a curving here, and then it kind of goes straight like that. And his nose is here. And then I see something that kind of goes up like this a little bit, and then back out again like that. Okay, I'm gonna draw his nostril right there, and then his little smiling mouth. Little mouth, okay. I think I'm gonna widen this a little bit up here and just darken that line a little bit. And then I'm gonna erase that line and that line and also right here. Now because this leg is behind this one, I'm just gonna darken this line. So it pushes that leg back and makes it look like it's behind this leg a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna go back up here seeing more of a curve happening here. So I'm just gonna change that a little bit, not too much. I'm coming down and maybe going up a little bit higher. So I'm just kind of really zooming in, looking at this photo a little better and trying to get those details right. So he's got a lovely mane, I'm gonna add that. So I have his furry mane. You can color that in later. Um, let's see. I'm going to just kind of curve this line a little bit on the top of his head. Maybe change this ear a little bit, make it a little bit more triangular like that. So I'm liking how his head looks. I'm just going to add a little bit more of a darker line right there. Okay. I think I like his head. I'm going to move on down to here. So I'm just going to erase some of these lines on the inside and erase that line. And maybe just make this be a little bit curvier. Like that. This can be a little curvier. Keep it straight. Like that. And I think I'll erase a little bit of this line, a little bit of that line. So I like how he's starting to look. And I'm gonna slide over, we're almost done. We can color him in. I'm just gonna darken this line a little bit. Kind of goes up a little. Maybe comes down a little bit more than what I had originally drawn. And I'm noticing this because I'm looking at my reference picture. And I think I'm just gonna kind of soften these corners a little bit so they're not so super pointy curve them a little bit. I'm just kind of darkening things as I go. I'm going to erase this line and maybe erase that line because I changed that line a little bit. Curved it down. I'm going to go over here and erase this because you wouldn't really see that. And I'm going to keep part of this curved line, but I'll probably erase this. Okay, so he's looking good. I'm going to erase this. That. Kind of redo his hoof a little bit. Just kind of go over those lines a little. Soften the edges so they're not pointy. And I'm going to add that hairy kind of tail. 
There. I think I like it. Next time, we're going to add some color. And I'm going to show you how to make him look a little bit three-dimensional so that it looks like there's some form there. Right now, this is a flat two-dimensional drawing. But when we add color and some dark and light values, shading and shadows and light areas, that's going to give it the look of being three-dimensional and having form. So we'll do that next time. Good luck. Hey guys, welcome back to another virtual PE episode. I'm Miss Reedy. Man, yesterday's workout still has me sore, so we definitely need to stretch today. So I'm going to lead us in stretching, and then you're going to follow up with Mr. Yameen. So let's get to it, guys. All right, we're going to start with a 30-second, just again, rolling our head around in a circle, one motion in one direction, go. It's going to loosen it up.
again. We're going to use the wall look with two hands this time, and we're going to twist because we're kind of stretching our back this time. Welcome back. It is Thursday. Thursday is a stretch day. And hopefully you had a good workout yesterday. We got wall sits, something a little bit new. So today we are going to stretch the legs. Okay? Uh, we're going to stretch our hamstrings. We're going to stretch our quads. We're going to stretch our calves. We're going to stretch our Achilles tendons, our upper groin, our inner groin. And we're going to work on a couple of little good things for the hips. We haven't done the hips yet, which is very, very important. All right? So I want you standing next to a wall. Okay? Grab one, so you're going to need that, especially for your last exercise. All right, well, let's, let's do our, we're going to start off with our hamstrings. We're going to go 15 seconds each leg, or 30 seconds if we do a single stretch, okay? So first thing you do, put your right foot over your left foot. Leg straight, do not bend the knees. Okay, reach down as far as you can and hold. Okay, we'll do this for 30 seconds. Ready? Go. to your right side. Remember, flat on the floor. Keep this foot down. You might not be able to see my camera, but that foot is flat. Okay? And this thing. Quads, okay? Quads, front of your legs right here. Okay? Go onto the wall again. If you have trouble balancing, just hold onto the wall. You can do this without holding onto the wall if your balance is good. Okay, but let's go to our left leg. Okay, right from the end of the wall. Just go right back and hold. Good. 
Okay, let's go. Right leg. Here we go. Right leg back, hold on to the wall. You don't need it. You got good balance. You don't need to hold on to the wall. But just make sure you get a good stretch. You feel that stretch in your quad, the front of your leg. this stretch right here. Your right foot is flat, your left foot is back, okay? Both feet stay on the ground flat. Okay, you're gonna bend your front knee and reach up and hold. right, left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, slightly. Don't go too hard. Just feel a nice little stretch. Tomorrow I got a nice good upper body workout for you. Right to cap off the week. Okay? Have a 
good day. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.